So this piece was purchased in order to become a bathroom vanity, which means we want to protect the top with a little bit of clear coating resin. So I'm going to show you the prep that I've done for this piece to get it ready to accept the resin. Now this has an odd shaped size to it, which means when the top gets resin on it, it's going to want to drip down and it will catch the sides. So I wrap the entire body of the piece in a plastic shrink wrap. And you do that starting at the bottom and working your way to the top so that everything is layered going down. The feet are also protected so when it drips from the top, it doesn't drip down onto those feet. Um, and then it's taped up under the lip of the piece so when it runs, it's not going to want to form drips under that lip. Um, I have cardboard underneath and this is going to catch anything that drips and makes it down to the floor. And then this piece has been leveled out um, to make sure that we're working with a level surface. I have my torch out and I'm going to get started mixing my resin. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and get ready to mix my resin. And the resin I'm going to be using is Amazing Clear Cast Plus from Alumalite. I'm choosing this because I'm going to be pouring my resin over a light colored surface. I've got yellows and grays. And this has UV resistance, so it won't have a tendency to want to yellow. If I'm using um, uh, the non-UV resistant resin, I would do it with dark colors. So say if I was mixing it in a black or a blue, uh, that's great. But because this is going over light colors, I don't want it to have a tendency to amber over time. So my mixture for the Amazing Clear Cast is going to be equal parts of A and B. So what I've got out here is I've got my two mixing cups and I'm gonna pour them together into this and this will be what I stir them in. I've got my uh, silicone brush that I'm gonna be applying this onto the surface with. I've got a stir stick and let's go ahead and get this poured. So I'm gonna do equal parts of both portions right up to the same line. All right, a little tiny bit more of this. And I do wanna to try to get these as exact as possible. This resin is a little bit more finicky than working with a casting resin. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into my cup. Resin is a heat, uh, a heat reaction, and so it can be temp um, temperature and humidity sensitive. I'm doing this indoors in a climate controlled space. Um, I am wearing gloves. You can have skin sensitivities to resin. And it's also a good idea to wait, make sure your space is well ventilated and wear a mask if you feel, uh, if you'd like to. Um, okay, so I've got my part A in here and now I'm gonna mix in my part B and this is gonna start my uh, chemical reaction. I do have about a 45 minute working time with this. So I don't need to be in a particular hurry. But I'm gonna spend my first five minutes or so just stirring this pulling it up from the bottom, making sure I get everything in this adequately mixed. It's nice and warm here in California. It was 108 this weekend, so my resin is nice and loose and thin. If it's cold, it tends to be really thick to stir. So this is great conditions for pouring resin in. I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera and I'm just gonna keep mixing this until I feel like it's adequately mixed. Okay, I'm working in a clean, lint-free space. I've made sure that my surface is clean and free of any oils or residue. You can wipe it down with a rubbing alcohol to make sure you've got any oils from your fingers or anything. Those will create areas that your resin doesn't wanna to stick to. Um, and now I'm gonna go ahead and pour this over the top. Um, I do this in my garage as my workspace, and so I try to keep it as dust-free as possible in the 24 hours before I'm going to pour. I will not open the doors in here to let any dust settle. And then once I do this, I'm gonna leave the space completely and I won't come in here until it's cured for at least 24 hours. So I've got my mixture completely stirred. My surface is nice and clean. I've got my gloves on and I'm gonna go ahead and pour this over the top. I do have this honeycomb pattern over here and I'm gonna to need to get all my resin into the honeycomb. It is a liquid, so it's going to have a tendency to self-level, and I'm gonna do the top first. I'm not doing any of the edges. I'm gonna leave just a little bit into my container in case I have areas that I need to come back to, and then I'm gonna start spreading this out over my surface.
and now that my top is completely covered, I'm going to go ahead and let this start flooding over the edges, which means I'm going to start feeding my resin out to those edges. I do this last because once I do this, it's going to start dripping over the edges and this is where it starts to get messy. Once I've got it out to these edges, it's going to start pulling itself over the edges and it's going to continue to flood any excess. And I'm going to go around and make sure I get all of my edges nice and covered. I'm pulling all my resin from the center of my piece. I have more than enough. And right away, you can see it's starting to drip onto my plastic. Okay, I've completely emptied my bucket out onto my surface just to make use of any resin that I mix so I don't waste any. And I'm gonna let this dry with my uh, silicone tool inside my bucket. And the reason is because when I come tomorrow to do my second pour, I'll be able to pull that stick out and it will clean my bucket. So I will leave my resin tool in the bucket uh, to let it dry. And that way it will help me in cleaning this out so that I can reuse this bucket and it will be clean tomorrow. Now that my surface is completely covered with my first coat, it's nice and leveled out, I'm gonna go ahead and torch it. So I want you to get in close with the camera and really see how the bubbles come out of this. Can you see the bubbles in this spot pretty good? <laughs> Okay, this initial torching, I do look over my surface and just look for any unevenness because this can show me if I have little fuzzes or anything that I need to pick out of my resin before I let this coat dry. The other thing you want to be careful of is because I've wrapped my piece in plastic, don't get your torch too close to the plastic or you can cause it to melt. Um, and right off the bat, I do see a little piece of something right here that I'm going to get out. And I'll just look it over and I'm going to go ahead and torch this again. You never want to over torch your resin because you can also burn it, which will cause it to amber. Um, I'm going to let this sit for just about five minutes or so and then I will come torch it again and then I'm going to leave it for the night. I let my piece sit overnight and now I'm going to come back and basically repeat the same process all over again for a second coat. Um, in this case, I need a second coat because this is going to be my flood coat. It's going to perfect any um, imperfections that I had in that initial coat. And I did have a few because where I have the honeycomb pattern, it's a raised pattern. And so the um, resin didn't necessarily level evenly into all those honeycomb shapes. So not having a perfect pour on your first time can be very common if you have any raised surfaces. It can also be more common if you have any mica powders or glitters in your resin. So this second coat is really just a flood over the top and give me that perfectly smooth glass-like finish. 
I mixed up exactly the same amount of resin that I mixed on the first batch and that's because it worked perfectly. It was exactly what I needed and I'm going to repeat the process. So I mix part A and part B, stir them together for four to five minutes. I'm going to brush it on using my silicone brush um, all over the center of the piece and then lastly I'm going to let it flood over those edges. In between these two coats, I just make sure that I don't touch my clean resin with my hands and leave any gra uh, grease or oils on there. If I do, you can use rubbing alcohol to clean those off in between coats. And I usually do them about 24 hours apart and that way my first coat of resin is still a little bit soft, it's not fully cured, um, so the two coats can amalgamate together. Because it's really pretty normal to see some imperfections in that first coat, try to be patient with yourself and not freak out the first coat. This second one is really going to be where that magic happens. This piece is going to be used for a bathroom vanity and I won't be cutting the top, but whoever uses this after me will be able to cut a hole for the sink and they're going to be placing a vessel sink over the top of it. The resin is going to keep this top entirely waterproof and I did advise the new owner that they don't want to use any kind of abrasive because it can have a tendency to scratch the resin. Even something like a soft scrub can leave fine scratches in there so be careful you don't use any abrasives. This top also had a natural dip in the center of it and that was just from the wear and um, it being a vintage piece of furniture. So my first coat also filled that and leveled it out. So when I'm coming back for this second coat, I'm gonna get a nice even and level surface. My steps on this coat are exactly the same as the first. I'm gonna brush it out over the center of the piece. My last step is to let it flood over those edges. And then once I've got a good even coat, I'm gonna come back and torch any bubbles out of the piece. I'll let that sit for five to 10 minutes or so and come back and torch it one more time. And then I will leave this overnight. While my resin is soft, I do also come back after about an hour or so and I'll just check under the lip of my piece and see any drips that have started to form and I can still clean those up when the resin is soft. Any that tend to dry or you let harden with the resin, um, you do have to either cut those off with a razor blade or you can sand them smooth afterwards so it makes your life much easier to try to clean them off while that resin is still soft. Because this is also my final coat, I spend extra time going around and just making sure that I don't have any specks of dust or anything uneven in this coat. So it does take a little bit more finesse on this one. All right, so I've waited another 24 hours and my second coat is fully dry and this is when I'm gonna come and pull this tape and plastic off. And I pull the tape at the 24 hour mark because my resin is still semi soft, but it's not dripping anymore. So it's not fully cured, fully hardened. That usually takes about 48 hours. Um, and so I wanna get this before it's fully hardened or that tape will harden in the resin and it's even harder to get off. You can even see here, mine is a little bit hard and so I have to pull some pieces out of the resin, um, but it's much easier to do than when it's fully cured. You can use a razor blade to pull any parts of the tape that are a little bit stubborn, so I just do this carefully making sure that I don't do any damage to the resin. This piece is complete and I didn't do a full staging on this one because this piece is already purchased. So I just took some photos so the new owner could see how the top looks with that resin pour on it. I'm thrilled with how it turned out. It is smooth as glass. I love working with the amazing ClearCast Plus resin. You guys can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. And don't forget to click that subscribe button for weekly tutorials here at Brush by Brandy on YouTube.